In this video, I build a beautiful logging camp. I also decorate an enchantment room, build a train station, build a signal box, decorate the gondola station interior, and fight four withers, which means I had to fight enough wither skeletons to get 12 wither skeleton skulls. Let's create. This wood farm is doing very well. In fact, in some circumstances, it's doing a bit too well. We've got way too much spruce compared to everything else, as well as way too much jungle and even too much cherry. But interestingly, as much as we've got stripped variants of all of the other woods coming through, for some reason, we're not getting any stripped cherry. Sounds like there's a whole bunch of jobs to do still at the tree farm. And there is, in fact, I've made a clipboard full of jobs, not just for the tree farm, but for everything that I haven't finished off yet. And boy, there's a lot. For a start, we need a station. Over here, we've got the tracks laid out for it, but I just haven't put one in yet. We also need an interior for this hotel because, well, most of the rooms still have absolutely nothing in. And we need to fix our rail system. You did that in the last episode. Well, I kind of did. We got some gravel down and we got some tunnel entrances, but the tunnels are still very bare and these edges still look incredibly horrible. Of course, we also need to stack a couple of monkeys on top of each other in order to... Well, I don't know what for, just, just because. We need some actual stairs down at the power station and ideally not a death trap on this rail as you come off them. And the gondola station, where we started. There's practically nothing in here at all and I want a nice little reception area, a place to buy tickets from, somewhere to maybe sit down while you're waiting for a gondola and all those sorts of things. And speaking of tree farms and gondola stations, we still need to get the lava that goes from the hot springs to the power station across to the gondola station so the gondolas can take it to the tree farm so we can add power there. And then we need to build a mini power station at the tree farm. And in terms of little jobs, I need to put snow on the roof of our little snow farm's cabin because that doesn't make any sense. I also really hate this roof. And speaking of snow, and perhaps this isn't quite such a little job, if this is supposed to be a ski resort, it's going to need a lot more snow in it. But before we get to all of those things, there's something else I really really need to do and that is to sort this backpack situation out see i've got this giant backpack with a couple of diamond upgrades in it and it carries all of my essential create items as well as a lot of resources which does make it very handy for crafting things when you're out and about what it doesn't help with though is the fact that i've got all of these building resources in all of these chests because i've got nowhere to put them which means every time i go off and do a little bit of a project i end up having to craft up a bunch of stuff take it out in these little backpacks that don't have a great deal of space and then unload it all again when i get back so i'd like another the big backpack. I'd like an even bigger one with even more space and even more upgrades so I can store everything I need for building. But these stack upgrades are incredibly expensive and I need at least two of them, ideally three. And I don't have that many diamonds so I guess it's time to start using this incredible number of mechanical drills I now have and go mining. So if it isn't already obvious by the title and the thumbnail this episode is all about ticking off as many of these jobs as possible and I don't think I'm going to get them all done. But we'll make a start. Oh, I forgot about this. I didn't actually put this in my last video because I was running out of time in the edit. But unfortunately, as I killed the pillager patrols that were over at the snowy area, I accidentally came back here and started a raid, which is not ideal because I've got villagers up here. Fortunately, though, none of them seem to have got in the storage system. And as I understand it, if I just ignore these guys, they'll eventually despawn and the raid will stop. So that's my plan. All right, first things first, I guess. Dig a big old space down here in the deep slate. Oh, this is fun. Can't do anything down these mines without you guys. Go away. For goodness sake, every block I dig, it's got you in it. Ooh, I got some already. And the machine is pretty much ready now. That is a lot of mechanical drills. All right then, let's give it a shove. I guess I'm going for a ride. How am I supposed to do a time lapse if I'm getting eaten by you every time I start the machine? Stop it. Right, I've got an idea. Put the seat up there and they won't be able to reach me there. Oh dear. Oh jeez. Run away. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, 37th time's the charm. This is just getting ridiculous. Stop it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look how many silverfish there are. Now the zombies have got me torches. Oh my, no, run away. Never a minute's peace. And speaking of a minute's peace, the raid has now finished. But the best news is there's a whole lot of diamonds. Oh my goodness. Um, oh jeez, I'm glad that stopped when it did. Oh my god, stop it! Oh. Oh, I've added three more deployers on the back of this thing and I've filled this chest pretty much full of torches. So this time, as it goes, it should hopefully light up the area as well, which is going to stop me getting eaten by all of those nasty things on the way. I need to find a different place to go mining. And I think that's probably plenty of mining for today. Nope. 
Well, we got quite the haul. These are all of the diamonds that we got, and I've got a whole bunch to crush down in our crushing machines to get even more. Right, crushing wheels. It's your time to shine. Wow, we got a whole bunch more diamonds from that as well. But what's that in terms of diamond blocks? It's 44. So before I make this backpack, I've decided to empty this backpack out so that we can use this as the base. And then that's just occurred to me that there's one type of tree that we haven't been farming. A whole different type of tree is azalea. We don't have azalea anywhere. I can't believe I didn't do azalea. Oh, jeez. And I know azalea is just oak wood, but azalea leaves are the best leaves in the game. There we go. We've got four diamond stack upgrades. We can put four of those stack upgrades, an advanced refill upgrade, and now each slot can take so many items I can't even fill it. I think that's way too many. I can hold 32,000 with three of them. So now I've got two spare stack upgrades at diamond level, so I didn't need hardly any of those diamonds at all. But what I do need is more slots and more upgrade slots as well. And in order to get more slots, slots, I'm going to need a netherite upgrade, which is only one netherite ingot, but it does require a smithing template. And I haven't had any of those yet, so I better get my clipboard out. Netherite. I wasn't planning on doing that today. So now this second backpack's a little bit better organised. I need to make myself a diamond sword. And now I need to enchant it. And the main thing I need is looting, which I don't have. And none of these villagers seem to sell. So I guess now would be the perfect time to decorate one of the rooms in this hotel. A few moments later. Well, I've been hard at work making an enchanted room, but it's a little bit unusual. And that's because it's full of leaves and moss and dirt and vines and things like that. I wanted it to sort of feel a little bit like an enchanted forest and I realised that's a little bit of an odd thing to do for a hotel room. But I really like it. I think it's great. We've got some chests and some photos, armour stands. We've got our alchemy table here, some clipboards and stuff on the wall and we've got a whole bunch of bookshelves and hopefully that is enough level it is to get us level 30. Let's stick our sword in there. Are we going to get losing three? We're not. But good news, I've got a grindstone and a whole bunch of levels from Hill Valley. I'm going to be here for a while. No, 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 no. Looting three! There we go. Oh, and it's just looting three as well, but that's absolutely fine. That said, I would very much like another one with smite five on it. Oh, smite four. That's close. Oh, in fact, that'll do. Oh, do you know what would be really useful in here as well? We'll throw the anvil down there. Perfect. Right, let's stick all of these things together. 27 levels. Oh, jeez. Right, the other good thing about this room is all of these chisel bookshelves here actually have empty books on, which means you can always get an empty book if you need one. The only problem with this room is, well, basically don't look in the room downstairs. I said don't look in the room downstairs, oh, jeez. We can fix that when we come to decorate this room, I'm sure. And there we go, that's plenty. And there we go, a ridiculously good sword. Looting three and breaking three, sweeping edge three, mending and smite four. It would be nice with smite five, but that... Oh. That anvil broke already? I only just put it down. I guess we'll put another one down. Right, lovely room done. And I would check that off the list, but that's not the whole hotel interior. It's just one room, so I really can't do that. So there's a couple of things that I want to do in the nether. The first is to risk putting down my incredible machine. Fingers crossed it doesn't all get stuck in the walls. Oh, there it is. And then I need to make a slight modification to this. Instead of using redstone torches at the side to power the rail, I'm going to use redstone blocks. And the reason I'm going to use redstone blocks is because lava washes away redstone torches, stopping this from working and redstone blocks shouldn't get washed away so this thing shouldn't struggle with lava there goes nothing oh oh jeez oh jeez it's already gone through a lava lake wow this thing's big <gasps> for some reason it does keep stopping which is not ideal oh no will it survive it's surviving oh we got more lava coming oh jeez oh i think we'll survive it's fine oh well that could have gone worse that's a pretty big old area that that's just cleared out what are you? What is the what? A drop bear? No, thank you, drop bear. I've had enough today. Oh, what did it drop? The drop bear, drop, drop bear claws. Okay, let's put the thing back together again and see what we got. A lot of netherrack, a lot of flint, a lot of gravel, a bit of quartz, some blackstone, and 19 pieces of ancient debris. Of course, the other reason I wanted to come to the nether is to beat up some wither skeletons. And the reason I want wither skeletons is I want wither skulls. And the reason I want wither skulls is to make a beacon. And the reason reason I want a beacon is so I can make chunk loaders, which is something else that I need to do that wasn't on my list. Might not be the best fortress for Wither Skeletons, but I know there's another one not too far away. And here we go, a much bigger nether fortress with hopefully not bigger Wither Skeletons, but the uh, right size ones, ideally. And this is why I wanted Smite 5, because with Smite 5, Wither Skeletons are one-hit kills. With Smite 4, they do take a couple of hits. I got one! I've got two. I've got three. Four. 
I've got five now. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Well, there we go. And I've got a couple of really nice backpacks as well. While I was there, I also got this feeding upgrade as well, but it doesn't really work. Oh, I didn't have any food in the backpack. Oh, that might have been mine. Well, there we go. Put food in your backpack, it works. But there we go. Job done. We can go home now. Oh, you can't. You need to go to a bastion and get another right template. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a bastion, but I have no idea if it's the right type or not. I know it's very specific which type of bastion it needs to be. So I'm going to fly around here as quickly as possible. Try not to get beaten up by all the brutes because I'm carrying very important things. Let's see if I can find some chests. There's one, and there's a brute out. Oh, and I could do with sharpness now, not smite. Jeez, you took a lot of hits. Ah, this could be a big problem. With the skeletons are easy. <laughs> Brutes, on the other hand. Oh, a couple of chests here. No, eh, no. Pretty sure these are the wrong type, Sebastians. And here we are. Is this the right type? It's got one of these big rooms. I think this is the room I need. Is it going to... Oh, oh, my God, jeez. Yeah, you guys all just fall off trying to get me. That's a good idea. And then I'll just shove you all in the lava. That's it. This way, sir. There we go. Come on, push each other in the lava. There we go, that's it. Push that brute in. Get in that lava. There we go. And you get in that lava as well. Brilliant. There we go, I got some. Oh, I'll take that gilded blackstone as well. Right, time to go. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is the Bastion. We popped our heads through in one of the earlier episodes of this Let's Play. So if I just dig through here, I should find my old staircase there. There it is. Perfect. Lovely. See you later, guys. Okay, first things first, let's duplicate this upgrade, which I'm pretty sure is like that. No, like that. There we go. And we'll throw our ancient debris in there, and that'll get smelted very quickly, and that's going to end up back in the storeroom. Oh, and we can get rid of these levels now. We don't need them. Top up the XP tank. Oh, we're going to get a mighty five pieces. Big old backpack upgrade time. Get the one off my back. Stick it in here. Stick one of them on. And one of those in, and there we go. A netherite backpack. And I'm going to do it with the other one as well. You should do it on your tools. Nah, I don't need it on my tools, mate. <laughs> Just one more line? Is that it? Well, I feel a little bit like I've been ripped off. At least you get more upgrade slots though. I'm gonna keep my new one on my back. No, I won't. I'll throw it on the floor. My other one can stay in my inventory. Inventory? Inventory. We are getting quite the assortment of backpacks now. But before we go off killing withers, we should probably tick off something else. And the thing I want to do most is... Oh my goodness me. We've had all of this rail in here for a while now, but absolutely nowhere for the train to park at. So I'm going to do that next. I started by removing the existing track and signals, as they were too close to the edge of the lake and I wanted the station to have two platforms. Then I laid down some new track in a better position and started to build up the foundation of the platforms using variations of andesite due to its colder feel that I think fits in better with the snowy environment. As I was just about done with the platform foundations, a pillager patrol arrived, and I didn't want Bad Omen again, so I manoeuvred myself so that they killed their own captain. And with those guys out of the way, it was time to make the tracks look snowy. In order to texture rail, you have to use blocks that have a slab variant, which snow sadly doesn't, so I needed the closest thing. That ended up being another variant of andesite, which I think looks like a really good gravel and snow mush. Piling that up at the edges of the platform with a few framed blocks really made it pop and with the frame block edging on the side of the platforms in place, everything was starting to come together. Next, it was time for a bridge. Using my core stairs and bridges, I threw up a way for passengers to get from one side to the next and dealt with another pillager patrol in the same way as I did before. And with the bridge done, it was time to decorate, so I put in some stairs for access, fences around the edges, some benches, and a couple of lampposts on either side. Then, to finish it off, I added some more snow around the platform and replaced a few of the platform blocks near the snow with diorite variants in order to make it look more like the snow had been trodden into the platform. If you're enjoying this video and you're not yet subscribed, then please do because 81% of you are watching this and you haven't. What are you doing? Well, there's our little snowy station and it's not 100% finished. There's a few things I need to do, but what I've mainly tried to do is make it look like these tracks are sort of mixed up with the gravel and looking a bit dirty and pushed up to the edges. And I've tried to add a little bit of detail in where the snow is making the blocks a little bit lighter around the area. But obviously the whole thing's not covered in snow yet. The whole area is not covered in snow and there's this nice area here that I thought would be perfect for a signal box. It just seems like the right thing to put in here. And I think this sort of thing is what I'm looking for. Bricky at the bottom, lots of white looking wood, and plenty of glass, and some stairs. Now I wonder, can they make dark oak look like bricks? No, but I can have planted dark oak logs, which kind of look a little bit sort of like bricks. And these dark oak planks look a little bit bricky, but it's not really what I was looking for. Now the options we've got for darker blocks are of course deep slate, 
which looked pretty good. Blackstone, which looks a little bit too dark. And we've also got mud, which you can turn into bricks, which has a nicer sort of brown to it, which you'd sort of expect to find in sort of the snowy sorts of areas. But I'm not sure if I like that either. And I do like the deep slate, but I don't think it really fits in with everything else we've done. And there's also basalt, which is quite contrasty, but that does sort of have that cold snowy feel to it. But I still don't think it's quite the colour I was going for. And I think that sort of thing looks okay. It's a bit odd, but I think once we've got the rest of this building in, it'll make sense. Now, I really wanted to use limestone for like the slatted wood, but this is the only variant that's got horizontal lines on it and it doesn't look ideal. And there really aren't that many other light blocks that I can make use of here other than diorite, but diorite I'm using for the snowy bit, so I think that'll look out of place. And wood-wise, again, we don't really have any light woods other than birch, and I really don't want to throw birch in there because that's too yellow. So do you know what? I think we should scrap this and just stick with our normal colours and make it fit in with the area. think that's too bad it's come together okay it's nice and small it needs some snow around the edges and of course it needs an interior and inside i'd like to have a display board on here displaying when the trains are arriving and leaving the station and just some controls on here that don't really do anything because we don't have any track switching on this track although signals at this signal box might be a good idea and definitely snow need more snow better add in some snow better add in some snow now, I don't want to go too crazy with the snow yet coming up to this mountain because, well, that's work to be done for a different time. But I'm happy with that and I just need to do the internals now, uh, which means we're going to need power to it, more display boards. However, by the looks of things, we've run out of lava again at the power plant, so I can't produce any more andesite alloy to make the display boards with and I've only got one piece. Yep, there's none at the power plant and there's none at the hot springs. And the reason this keeps happening is because there's nobody loading the nether, so the nether train can't can't fill up. Even though trains in Create can run in unloaded chunks, they can't access devices in unloaded chunks, so we really need a chunk loader. So I guess it must be time I fight one of those withers. Oh, jeez. And because Java Edition withers are for babies, and wardens are basically wimps, I have every confidence that I can defeat this wither in this ancient city. What could go wrong? No, I'm kidding. I'm not doing it in an ancient city. I'm not a more. Oh, what was that? What are these? Urns. Can I break it? They can, what did I get? Ash. Brilliant. Oh, and I got the urn. Anyway, I don't have the urnged to get killed by a warden and a wither. So let's just go and kill the wither. In these caves directly under Hill Valley. What could go wrong? You're a moron. I know. Put the bed down in my little escape hatch and set my spawn. And let's build a wither. Two, three. Get away from his initial explosion. Events occur in real time. Here we go. And let's kill this guy. Wow, my sword is doing well against him. Jetpacks for the win when it comes to withers. I think I'm going to die, though. I've got one heart. I'm about to die. Golden apple. Oh, that was close. That was very close. It only needs a couple more hits, though. One, two, three. There we go. I told you withers were for babies. That was easy. Jeez. So let's do another one. Go. And there's another one down. If only the bedrock edition with her was so easy. Let's do another one. There we go. All right, last one then. Let's do this. And dead. 
Didn't even need a golden apple that time. I can't believe how easy that was. Okay, with the withers down and nether stars in my pocket, let's see if we can craft up some chunk loaders. Oh, I'd have to do it in automatic crafters? Can I not just do it on normal crafters? Four beacons, please. Smash this one to bits first. Get it connected to our mechanism, just like... Oh, jeez, overstressed. Unplug the grind wheels. There we go. Put one of those in there, one of those in there, and a beacon in the middle, and here we go. A chunk loader! Right, let's make four of them. Four chunk loaders. Now, the thing is, I have absolutely no idea how these work, and I don't know if they need power. And it doesn't have a pondering thing on here, so I'm just going to place one down over at the factory and see what happens. Because, realistically, it's this factory that I want loaded so that we can keep producing iron and things while I'm over at the other area. I also have no idea if this does even more than one chunk, so uh, I guess let's just shove it there for now. It doesn't have a UI, and there's no. it doesn't seem like there's any way of putting power into it. Can I get it with the wrench? No. Is that it? How do I know if it's working? I've just read the wiki. It's not really what I want. What these do is they keep chunks loaded around a moving contraption. And none of these are moving contraptions. They're all incredibly stationary. What is a moving contraption, however, is our nether train. So I could potentially attach one to this so that it can use this when it's in here. But I don't know if this will... Oh, well, of course, this will run while it's loaded. So yeah, that will work. Excuse me, little driver. I'm going to just put that chunk loader in behind you. So hopefully this train will continue to run while I'm not here and it's nearly full so let's find out if I go through here is it going to come through and follow me oh it's already going oh man that means I've got to wait for the whole thing again I will just wait patiently for you to go around and do it again sir off he goes and the question is will he come back without me going in there it's being patient time so I waited and waited and then waited some more but the train never came back oh jeez well, there's only one way to find out if it's doing anything. If it's got lava in when I get there, as in a lot of lava, then we know it's working. If it hasn't, then it's not working. How much lava do you have? None. Great. So it doesn't work. What a waste of my time. I guess I'll just have to do what Mr. Beardstone advised me to do in the first place and install a different mod. And the mod I've installed is FTB Chunks, and apparently I can just claim some chunks to use this for. So I guess that one, that one, and that one would be useful. Okay, due to the fact that I've incredibly badly chunk aligned this, and we have three chunk borders in this area here, I've now got to have three chunks loaded in the nether just to get the nether train to work, and another three chunks loaded here because although this little tank or at least most of it is within this section here the power is not and neither are these two filling pumps so that's a problem in fact i don't think i could have designed this entire thing worse in terms of chunk alignment if i tried because half of these tanks are in one chunk but the power for everything's in another but that should at least be the nether train sorted out now it's just popped back out of the nether which is a good sign and it's unloading, so we shouldn't run out of lava anymore for our power station. Now, I don't think I need to force load the power station because I only need the things to be running while I'm here and all of the boilers have kicked in again, so that's good news. And we do have quite a bit of lava in the buffer tank now. So realistically, at this area here, there really isn't a massive amount that I need to force load apart from the wood farm system if I want the wood to keep coming in while I'm not in this area. But for the moment, I'm probably going to be in this area quite regularly. However, back at Hill Valley, I really wanted this entire factory load in. But this this factory goes over loads of chunks and yet again look at that the power's in a different chunk to all of the contraptions so i think for now while i'm not desperate for all of the things in this area we won't bother force loading it we'll just come and afk here when we need to or we'll send chuck to uh, hang out here if we're desperate speaking of being desperate i desperately need to tick more things off this clipboard we can tick off station we can tick off backpack and we can tick off chunk loaders but there's a whole section of this tree farm tree farm tree farm tree farm six items in total that all need to be done over at our wood farm so i guess we should head over there next right first things first we're getting way too much spruce and the simplest way to deal with this is to not grow as many trees got the same issue with jungle so both of those are down to one tree per area now we also were getting way too much cherry blossom but no stripped cherry blossom for some reason so that should solve that little problem and of course we wanted azalea over here so in fact i'm going to get rid of this one altogether which is the cypress swamp stuff which is actually a really nice wood but it grows in such a crazy way i'm just gonna place those here and it's occurred to me after stopping all the machines and letting everything grow for a little while that azalea is not going to actually grow on its own I'm pretty sure you need to bone meal it yeah and that could be a problem because i could fill this with bone meal but then it's going to export it all i guess if i put a filter on there it won't take the bone meal out and then we could just have a barrel full of bone meal on there potentially but then how's it going to replant them at the same time oh geez we'll worry about that later and with these little problems over here at this logging camp solved i guess it's 
time to build the building over our little production area. And the main materials I'm going to be using for this, believe it or not, are wood. Mainly because I've got tons of it over here and I'm going to be mainly using cypress logs because I really like it. And I'm going to try and squeeze some cherry in there as well. And maybe even some mangrove. Let's see how we get on. a mission but i think it's looking pretty good i'm very happy with it we've got a little lumber yard out here i've put pods all absolutely everywhere and blended it in with the gravel around the track we've got fences all around lights all around and the build itself i've tried to use the woods so it does look a little bit strange but i kind of like it and i think it kind of fits in here i think it's nice however i did discover why we've not been getting any strip cherry and that is because well, you can see them going through there. They don't strip. You put them through there, and even though it's set to strip, and if we look at the filter, the filter says stripped cherry logs, doesn't actually do anything. So that's why. In terms of decoration, we got the usual barrels all over the place. We've got some barrels over there. We've got some tables with saws on and more barrels. We've got some chairs and we've got more barrels, basically lots of barrels. And because this is a sawmill and sawmills will be quite horrible, dusty places, we've got plenty of ventilation in it here. So we've got a big open area here down the back. I haven't textured any of these blocks because I like the fact that they are open. And then we've got this campfirey flat bit at the front here again very open nice and airy so nobody should be getting any problems with their lungs over here there's nobody there oh yeah that's a good point oh well so this is really the only thing letting this area down now anyway let's look at this clipboard and see what we can tick off tree farm building done tree farm decorate done tree farm power not done tree farm lava import not done optimized tree farm less spruce jungle cypress more mangrove and willow done so next on the list i need to do tree farm power which is going to be nice and easy at the minute to be honest with you we've got this water wheel here i was planning on bringing lava over and having a steam generator but to be perfectly honest with you with this lovely little natural area i don't think it needs it and i kind of like that wood in fact i like the fact that it fits in with all the other wood so do you know what let's save myself a couple of jobs get rid of tree farm power get rid of tree farm lava import get rid of gondola lava export get rid of lava train to the gondola station and that massively cuts down our list see instead of ticking him off just delete them Perfect. But while I might be deleting some things from the list, there are some things I need to add to it because we still don't have an interior for our little signal box. Tell you what, I'm going to move all of the done ones onto this page. So let's start with a couple of very, very easy ones. The first being put some stairs on here and done. That was easy. What about the death trap of the rail? Yeah, well, this rail needs to change anyway, so we'll worry about that bit later. Next ridiculously easy job is to put snow on the snow farm roof. Done. I'm kidding! Technically, I have done it. And there we go. Now that's done. And I still hate the roof. It's so thick at the front. It's very difficult to get that not thick because of the angles that I've done it with and the frame blocks. But it, it'll do. It's better than it was and it's got snow on. Jeez, what more do you want? So there's just seven things left. Uh, there's no way I'm going to get the rails, the interior of the hotel and the tunnels all done today. Or all of the snow and the paths. But I might be able to get the signal box interior and the gondola station interior. At least started. Okay, I've crafted up a whole bunch of stuff so we should be able to get this thing going. So 32 display boards. <laughs> it's quite big. Maybe a little bit bigger than I wanted. That going to be enough room to display it all on there? Okay, click that with that and stick it on there see what that looks like oh it's not gonna look like anything because there's no power to this yet i guess we need to get our power lines over here but if we do that more well, they're going to be very close to the bridge and anyone walking across there might get electric shock it's not real i know it's not real but you got about you got to think about these things guys the other option we could go across from here over to there and then across to there all the way across here new power line in fantastic now all i've got to do is route it down underground into there wonderful 
We have power. And with one of those there and one of those there and a bit of one of them, we should have power to the control board now. We do. There's nothing written on it. Maybe I need to link it again. Click train schedule status. Why, what? Okay, fine. Let's change it to station summary. Ooh, dynamic timetables. Advancement. One minute the hill. That's really useful. 45 seconds the hill. Maybe we could make it a little bit bigger. The fly hill. Well, this isn't ideal. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, using a bit of dyna clipboard, I've now got it to say arriving in three minutes to the snowy station westward. And it's just left, so it must be a three minute track. And it's going to be departing the Hill Valley station in three minutes. What? Oh, departing to Hill Valley in three minutes. Right, I get you. I understand. Good, right, little control room then. A few moments later. Okay, this control room is now done. I've added in two signal boxes, which are attached to the track down there with some Nixie tubes on. So whoever's in here can see whether the trains are coming or not. We've got a couple of buttons and levers and things that do nothing. I've added a track switch in here that does absolutely nothing. I've also added in signals at this end of the station and at that end of the station because I forgot to add those back in again after I took them out to build the station. So with our display board and all of these fancy little things, I think this is a fabulous little working, semi-working signal box. Perfect. Another one to tick off the list. Which leaves us with the gondola station interior and the other ones that I'm ignoring. How hard could it be? What could possibly go wrong? I'm going to do it in the morning. Jeez. Well, the morning has been and gone. So all that's left to do is show you what I did at the gondola station. And all I did really was just add these trees outside. That's it. I didn't have time. For... No, I've, got... I've done it all. I've done it all, guys. We have an entranceway with some white text on there that doesn't show up. So I guess I need some glow squid. And we've got three options. We've got exit only, which obviously we're not going to go through because that would be very naughty. We've got staff only, which we're not going to go through because that would also be very naughty. And we've got the sky high gondola entrance. And if we go through here, we end up in a lovely little room with a little waiting area and I've used immersive paintings mod to add a picture of the actual gondola station. We got a couple more photos up here somewhere to sit and we got a ticket office. Now if you go through the staff only area, assuming you're actually staff of course, then you can come through into this little ticket office and there's a till and it tells you how much the ticket prices are, although that one's wrong. And there's a couple of little bits and bobs in here just to make it not completely empty. Back out into the main reception, the ticket office front is slightly different. We've got some notices on here. The Sky High Gondola doesn't go anywhere fun, but if you're into logs and spinny things, then grab your ticket now, because of course it goes over to the log farm. It also says ticket prices one way, one dollar, and return ten dollars, because we like to rip people off. There's another sign that says you are reading this, because I couldn't think of anything else to put on there, and then this one for conductors. Conductor hats are too expensive. Fancy flying through the sky on our very fancy monorail, doing the exact same loop day after day after day, forever? Sign up here! Of course they would. Why wouldn't they do that? Once you paid for your ticket, you come through into the little locker room. So with this being a ski resort, you would have your skis and boots and stuff in these lockers safe and you come and pick them up and put them on and put your clothes in there and then you go up the stairs onto the gondola platform and you would go and get in your gondola and go up the mountain. And when you finished doing all of that, you would come out and you would come down these stairs, down this little bit here, which is full of barrels just to take up the space really because there wasn't anything else to put in here. And you come out that door, which says exit only. And that's it. And I think it's great. I really like it. I think I've made a great use of the space that we had available in here. I like the fact that it's all segmented off, but it still feels nice and big and open. So we've achieved a whole lot today. We've made stations, we've made signal boxes, we've made interiors for there. We made the enchantment table interior in the hotel and we made the logging camp just look all that much more fancy. And now all of the trees have fully grown in. You can kind of appreciate that a little bit more. And I think that's plenty of work to do for one day. You're just going to stay there, are you?